Welcome everyone. Today's video is going to go over BFS rod selection. Uh, a lot of people look at glass rods and also carbon rods uh, for BFS trout fishing. I'm going to go over what situations I use a glass rod for and also a carbon rod. So if you want to see that, keep watching. Also comment down below what other BFS content you want to see. All right, to start off with, I'm going to talk about fiberglass rods. Uh, commonly they refer to as glass rods. Uh, so what they are, they're instead of being made of a carbon material for the blank, it's made of a fiberglass material. Uh, and there's different moduluses, if you want to call it that, and there's different recipes that uh, rod makers use to get different attributes out of it. And uh, nowadays the fiberglass is getting lighter and lighter and more responsive. So it's acting more as a carbon rod in that aspect. And it still has the ability to have a nice give to it as well. I type my drag up a little bit on here. But one good thing about fiberglass is is how smooth it bends and it, and it recovers slower, which it seems like that wouldn't be a good feature, but with head shakes, especially if you're in current for trout, the, uh, the rod's gonna be able to cushion those head shakes a lot better. And also when that when the trout comes up and grabs you lure and that there's that sudden jerk of it kind of hitting in the current and turning, that glass rod's gonna cushion that a lot better. So you, the fish is gonna be able to take the lure in its mouth better. So instead of just getting like skin hooked with the back hook, it might be able to get uh, more of that lure into its mouth. And the the cushion is especially important. I, I feel uh, when you when the fish is next to you. So when you reach for your net, you go to net the fish. That rod's able to cushion up those head shakes a lot more uh, because that's say monofilament, which I like to use a lot of in streams. You need some distance to be able to get that stretch. I mean, if you have a short monofilament like from the tip of your rod like this, or say like this, there's not as much give as it would be for fiberglass. Uh, so that's one thing I really like about fiberglass. Also with it being able to bend easier, like I talked about in a flip casting video, I'll put the link to that down below. The ability for it to, to load up easier and also deeper into the blank, it takes less force to be able to cast. So if you're in like really brushy areas, like I fish a lot, uh, you're able to just have a little flick of the wrist and that rod's able to load up and be able to get uh, some momentum for your lure instead of having to really load the rod up and then there's a lot of force and like with a carbon rod, it might launch your lure a little bit faster. Then you have to like slam on your, uh, put your thumb on your spool and the, then the lure like flies through the air, hits, it drops and it just kind of ruins up your, uh, your presentation a little bit. Some, some things for fiberglass that I don't really like too much is if I'm in fast current and I'm, and I'm working lures trying to twitch them, it can feel a little bit sloppy especially if you're using monofilament. Like right now I have braided line on here. This is uh, this is double cross uh, PE made by Veravis. It's, uh, and I just use a, a fluorocarbon leader. That's, I don't know, it's probably about three and a half feet long. So what that does is the lack of stretch in the, in the braid will actually make your rod more responsive because it, your line doesn't have that give like with monofilament. So that's a way that you're able to get a little bit more responsiveness out of a glass rod that it inherently uh, lax compared to carbon rod. So that really helped me out. I know a long time I was using monofilament on here and I felt like it was really squishy. And when I was fishing faster currents, especially right now, it's springtime, you have a lot of a lot more current and runoff than you normally would in the summertime. Uh, having that braided line really helps you get more positive hook sets and also be able to control the fish a little bit better. Uh, the weight, it is heavier than carbon, like I said before, uh, but it's with a short rod like this, it's not you can notice it, but it's not a big deal. It's not like you're using a big, long fiberglass uh, bass rod. So the weight, the weight difference that a lot of people talk about is very minimal with trout rods. Uh, sensitivity, it is, it's not as sensitive as carbon. You can really feel it when, you're, when you go from twitching lures or just even just steady retrieving lures with a glass rod. Then you go over to a, a carbon rod, like this Jackson rod here. This has monofilament on it. I can feel it's a lot more responsive. I can feel the shimmy of the... Um, I can feel the shimmy of the lure better. I can feel like when I'm hitting sand versus gravel. So I'm able to get more feedback with that rod. But there are a lot of advantages, uh, especially if you if you like flip casting or just that short range casting. I do like uh, a, a glass rod a little bit better. It's the, the more, and it's more moderate. And there's ways that you can kind of blend the two, which I'll get into a little bit. Now with the carbon rod, uh, you'll see here, they're generally faster action. Like if you can see that, it doesn't bend all the way back. It doesn't bend as easy. It's a lot more responsive. Like right when I let go of that tip, it's that that tip is already there. Or if I if I went and shot out a cast, uh, that that tip isn't going to move back and forth as much. It's going to just basically flick out there and and be out there. So that's why I like uh, carbon rods. I I do I will use them for short range. It's not that big a deal, especially a lot of times I'll pitch or just do like a little roll cast. 
But if I do um, longer casting, I definitely like a carbon rod better. I think the the little bit more, I guess you'd put the the reflex of the rod is able to flick the lure out there better. You can definitely get some better distance. Uh, the sensitivity, like I spoke about, it, it's it's a big di it's a noticeable difference. Like like I said, I have monofilament on this rod, braid on this rod, and I can feel a lot more what's going on with this rod versus that glass rod. Now, if I put braid on here, which I generally don't like to do because there's there's not enough give in the system. So I definitely use monofilament whenever I use a carbon rod, just to offset that stiffness a little bit. Cause like I, like I showed before, if that rod tip only really, I mean, I can get more into it by bending it, but if I just am bending that rod tip kind of like a normal, like I have a fish or I have a fish right next to me, there's not as much give. So if that, if that fish is shaking its head and you have braided line, it's, there's not enough give at all. And a lot of times those fish will shake themselves off, especially if you're using single barbless hooks like I usually do. Uh, the like, sensitivity, the, let me see, sensitivity, the, the reboundness. Oh, that's another thing. So when you're twitching these lures, uh, it's definitely a lot more responsive. I could sit there and that, that's just, I get so much more feedback, especially in current, if it's kind of heavy current and I feel that sometimes with the glass rod, I'm not really getting that much action out of my lure because the line is taking up that, the slack line because it's, I mean, the current's taking up the slack line because the glass rod has a little bit uh, slower reflex. So if I'm with that, with that uh, carbon rod with the faster action, I can twitch and I can make my lure dart back forth, back, back forth, even in heavy current, which is nice. And I can feel, and I can get some more positive hook sets too. If I'm, this is a little bit more open area. So if I was casting, this is, I wouldn't really be fishing a rod like this if I was just fishing right here. If I was fishing more of like a wider river and I cast across it, I could definitely get more control of the fish with a carbon rod and I can also get a lot better hook sets as well. Um, the weight, I can definitely tell the difference. I know that this is the Aldebaran on here, which is a lighter reel and this is a Silver Creek. There's not a huge difference between their weights, but I can tell this rod is noticeably lighter and better balanced, which is, like I said, it's very minor in the grand scheme of things, but just a factor. There are car carbon rods, like solid carbon rods, like that Suenor Aris, which I didn't bring with me, but that, that bends more like a glass rod, but it still is uh, a little bit more responsive, like a carbon rod. But you, you kind of get into a, a situation where it doesn't have enough give to really get those casting attributes of the glass rod, but it doesn't have the faster action of a, say a normal carbon rod to, uh, to be able to get like good hook sets and lure control and fish control. So sometimes I really get stuck, if I'm not fishing for very small brook trout, I get stuck in not being able to take advantage of any of those rods attributes. It doesn't have enough power to steer fish, but it's not really as responsive with lighter, lighter lures. So it's, a, it's kind of a gamble uh, that you take sometimes. Uh, line choice, I, I touched on it already, line choice. I, I like to use monofilament with carbon rods and there are carbon rods that are more moderate, uh, but like my, I have a Daiwa Silver Creek AGS. It's a five foot two light powered and it's a moderate action to it, but it's still a really stiff. It takes a lot of, it takes a lot of force to get into that, um, the bend. And a lot of times I feel that it's almost like a fast power rod. So I don't like to use braid with that. But yeah, monofilament with the, with the carbon rod is gonna get you some really good attributes all, all around. Now, if you want it, if you need like a lot of power using braid, you could, but you're really gonna limit yourself to like, really fast, really fast actions, also fighting a little bit bigger fish. And for the, for the glass, uh, I've used monofilament, which is fine. Uh, like I said, you get a lot of cushion and it is really good for fish that tend to short strike too, because they can get more of that lure in their mouth. But I, I feel that when you get, when you get into faster current, it's just, it, there's too much give. All right. So that's my take on kind of how you, how you match up a uh, line with a rod type and different, you know, different attributes of each type. But for me, this is just a, I should say this a disclaimer, this is just a general video. Now, if you went and got like, you know, an Anglo, you know, $800 glass rod, yeah, you're gonna, it's gonna close the gaps on some of those, it's gonna take away some of those cons maybe, uh, but this is just more of like your easily attainable tackle that you have. So, and then carbon, like I said, you're gonna get more sensitivity, especially if you are fishing a lot of jigs, not just minnow style baits. Uh, 
I'd go carbon all day over glass. But if you just fish them in a pinch, I've done it in a pinch and it's fine. So if you want to see more of these tackle tips, make sure you subscribe and comment down below what else you want to see. I'm going to be getting a lot of trout fishing videos uploaded. I was just trout fishing. Uh, it's the trout opener up here in Michigan. So I'm going to be getting a lot of content out 